What's up, Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Steel Mace Nation podcast. In today's episode, I'm interviewing a guy named Harrison Cohen. He's the owner of bladepapes.com. What's a blade pape? A blade pape is a sheet of basically it's an edible sheet, like a little slice of paper that if you buy your supplements in bulk or you want to take uh, herbs and other things like that or like mushroom powder, you could dump it into the paper and twist it up and then dip it in water and swallow it. Uh, we also talk about using it for taking kratom. So we have a really good conversation. He tells us a little bit about his business, but he's also really, really smart guy who um, knows a lot about different supplements and different ways to take supplements. We actually talk about uh, how to make your own pre-workout mix, which I thought was a really good idea because depending on what you're feeling, you know, you could leave certain things out. Like maybe you want to take a pre-workout without the caffeine. You know, maybe you're uh, having a cup of coffee and you don't want any more caffeine. So you could do something like that. And he has a little formula he's going to share with us. But before we get to it, I have to warn you that there was some editing issues. Well, basically, uh, Zoom went glitchy on us, cut us off, and uh, luckily, Harrison was recording on his end, so we were able to salvage it, and I pieced it together, um, and then we actually rolled another Zoom call after that, and we connected it in, and a lot of that has to do with I was using the, the free Zoom, and I wasn't paying for it, so it was cutting us off at 40 minutes, and that's the way it's been going for the past uh, few months. Uh, with a lot of the podcast, uh, you, if you guys are following, you'll notice uh, there's been some abrupt cuts at the end and things like that. And um, I thought I could get away with running the podcast like that because, you know, 40 minutes should be enough, but really it wasn't. And um, so I decided to, after this, I decided to just go ahead and purchase the Zoom plan since they were offering a discount anyway. So now I could record unlimited and you're going to be seeing a slightly longer podcast and they're not going to be 40 minutes. They'll be uh, an hour, hour, 15 minutes, whatever. Uh, but that is going to be an additional expense. And as usual, I always like to ask for support on the podcast and any support that you could give me to help offset those costs keeps me going. Um, you know, you could purchase shirts over at steelbasednation.com and uh, you could also check out the workout programs I have at steelmacenation.com, there's a $99 steel mace workshop, which is great because it's comprehensive. It covers like pretty much everything you need to know about mace. It'll get you started and it'll always be a good resource for you because once you purchase it, it's yours to keep. Um, there's also the 21 day steel mace challenge, which is a fun workout program. Uh, and that's, that's like 1999 and plenty of shirts. Also, um, there's shirts for sale on uh, that are that are not on the website. If you go to uh, my Instagram at Steel Mace Nation and you DM me for the uh, other shirts that are out there, I occasionally will post up what they look like. But if you don't see anything on the grid, uh, just hit me up and I'll send you pictures, a couple of cool shirts that uh, you might like. And um, yeah, that's about it. So we're gonna get to the podcast and see what Harrison has to say. What yeah. did it say? Recording. Oh. Cool. Got it. All right. Awesome. All right, we're both recording this. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to, back to the podcast. Today, I'm really excited to talk to Harrison from a company called Blake Papes. They make edible, edible film pouches, which I have been using. And as you can see, I have my edible pouches right here. Um, I started using these probably like a year ago, Harrison, and uh, they've been great because I'm a bulk supplements guy, and that's what these are great for. They're also great for taking Kratom. Right. And I take Kratom too, and Kratom tastes so nasty. <laughs> and I mean, these things are helpful. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Happy to be here, man. I appreciate you inviting me on. 
Yeah, man. Uh, the, one of the cool things is your Instagram, which is uh, at Blake Papes. Uh, people right. should go there because you got a lot of good info on there. And I'm always checking it because um, you're just so dialed in on supplements. And the rest of us, we're dialed in on all over the place. Like, um, I'm a mess. I can't focus on just supplements like you can. You you know, you know right. a lot. So what's great is you share a lot of good information. Mm-hmm. Um and also, you're into like you know, under trying to understand alternative remedies, alternative medicine, holistic approaches to things. And I think everybody is interested in that nowadays, especially now that we're starting to see you know, big pharma is kind of shady, right? So shady, man. It's all money. It's all money. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it, if you want to get into the history of it, like it's pretty crazy because it really started in the 20th century. Uh, you know, like. Uh, with like Rockefeller and Carnegie, you know, that's really where Big Pharma started. Um, and, you know, back then there, you know, even before that, there were, there were basically two types of medicine. You had allopathic and you had homeopathic, right? And allopathics believe that you should, you know, try to drive disease from the body. Okay. That's things like surgery. Um, and back before the 20th century, that was things like bloodletting. They even used harsh chemicals like mercury and lead. And uh, it's, it's scary, you know, and they- leeches. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. That's what allopathic medicine was. Then you have the homeopathic or the empiricals. They believe, you know, that you're supposed to enhance your body's own immune system and let, you know, let the disease leave the body naturally because we heal ourselves. You know, I mean, that's you get a cut, you heal. You know, that's just how it goes. So you want to enhance. Um, and that's, you know, done through herbs. That's done through diet, all kind of natural, you know, things that have been around for, for centuries. Um, and, and like lately, you know, in the 20th century, uh, you have... Carnegie and uh, Rockefeller, and you know, they basically they you know started the um, the AMA in uh, 1913. Um, I'm sorry, no, no, no. They started the, uh, the the American Cancer Society in 1913, and uh, you know, uh, they were trying to push chemical medicines, right? And uh, it really started with the the Flexner report, which they the Carnegie Foundation um, they, they 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 made a man named uh, Flexner Abraham Flexner, I believe. He went around to all 161 medical schools in the U.S., right? And he basically wrote this report that said that they should stop using natural homeopathic medicines in turn for Rockefeller patented chemical medicines. And at that time, it was it was a serious report that a lot. Of, it turned out that a lot of the the medical schools ended up shutting down because they Rockefeller Foundation or the Carnegie Foundation gave them all all like the people that would do that. Uh, grants, you know, they helped them out. And then it became almost like a, like naturopathy and homeopathic medicine became like, like folk medicine, you know, it didn't become, it, it, it's always worked, but it, it, it became more of like a, like, if you do it, then you're bad, you know, and so like, anyways, after that, I mean, it's, it's easy to see what happened, you know, that's big pharma, that's where it started, and you follow the money now, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't pay to cure people, right? I mean, we, I mean, conventional medicine it works you know it's not like it doesn't work but it's an option you know alternative medicines are another option but they're not they're not pushed they're not you don't find them because they don't make enough money and that's you follow the money you find exactly where you know it all lies yeah now how did you get into uh blade papes how did how did this come about were you a supplements guy already and you were just like choking down bulk supplements like (laughs) like i was (laughs) Where did this come from? And I and and also um, maybe you could show us how your blade peeps operate. How, how you yeah. hook one up? Absolutely, yeah. I got some right here. Um, so first, like, so my story is actually um, it's it's pretty long, but um, I yeah, I was always a bulk supplements guy. You know, from college on, I like you said, bulk supplements. It was cheaper. It was easier. Yeah. And, and back then, I didn't really. I wasn't really as uh, picky about the ingredients. I just wanted whatever was whatever was cheap, right? And believe it or not, I actually used to use I used to use one ply of toilet paper, and I would put it in the center of the toilet paper. I would wrap it up, and I would put it in my mouth, and I swallow it with water. I, you know, I don't have problems swallowing things, right? So, um, and then uh, I did that for you a know. Long. There's a condition. There's some kind of condition where where people pathologically uh, they they eat. They eat toilet paper and stuff. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's my strange addiction. They, they probably saw you and they were like, oh, that guy's a little 
<laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, and it wasn't even until later that you know, I, I learned about, you know, toilet paper is the chemical bleaching and all this stuff that you don't want to be eating toilet paper on a regular basis. But yeah. I mean, even that, I mean, it I've had plenty of times it broke open in my mouth and all that stuff, but that's kind of where it all started, you know? Um, and then, uh, so actually, um, later in, later in college, um, I, 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 I was a drug addict. I became addicted to drugs, uh, opioids. Um, I ended up having to, like my, my senior year of school, I had to leave, I got arrested. I had to go uh, back to live with my parents. And this like started like a, like a seven year, uh, you know, trying to get better, just not really knowing what I was doing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, during that time I couldn't go back to school because I was on probation. So I came back up to Orlando, uh, you know, kind of like when I was at my bottom, you know, I was just trying to get away from my parents and uh, I finished probation up here. Uh, I, you know, I got all my, I got all my stuff together. I went back to UCF where I was, uh, where I got kicked out of and I, I finished school this whole time, that whole time I never stopped working out, you know, even <laughs> that was just like, that's like, that's just who I am. You know, I just like, I need to, I think from, from childhood, I was like, you know, I was a, a big kid and I just had like a, you know, I just need to be working out. It makes me feel better. Right. Um, and yeah, so I came back to school. I finished my degree and a after I got my industrial engineering degree and it was like right before COVID started, like literally right into COVID, you know, I graduated and, you know, we didn't really know what we wanted to do. Um, but I had been doing this. I had been taking my supplements this way forever. And at that time I had also, you know, because I had gotten over my drug addiction and all that stuff, um, I got real into, you know, ingredients because I, I learned that during my drug addiction, I would take, you know, like all these supplements that like you know, all these crazy ingredients in them too, you know, pre-workouts, all this stuff, uh, Splenda, there was a point where I was using like six Splendas in one coffee. So artificial sweeteners, like and artificial flavors and all that stuff. Like I just, I wanted to cut them all out. And when I did, I noticed that like my anxiety uh, you know, like my, my, like overall just body wellness just got so much better. It was easier. I didn't have my addictive behaviors. I didn't have like, I didn't feel bad. Um, and it, it kind of changed my outlook. I was like, well, can this stuff actually change the way I feel like mentally inside and physically? And so that's when I cut out everything. I cut out, you know, like gluten, I cut out milk, which by the way, I withdrew from gluten and milk too, for like two weeks, terrible headaches. Um, but yeah, so I, I got real into, you know, like eating healthier and the ingredients of, of stuff, you know, even though I should have, I thought I was good back in college, but I wasn't, I didn't, people like uh, fitness supplements today, they, they trick you, you know, you think you're doing good for your body, but you look at all the ingredients and you're like, what is this stuff? You know, you can't even yeah. pronounce half the stuff and you know, it's, it's in everything. Um, so that's when I cut everything out. I felt a lot better and I realized, okay, this is something that people need to know about. And because I had been using toilet paper for so long, I actually ended up getting uh, something called rice paper, right? Like, I got big rice paper sheets and I tried those out first. I was like, okay, well, this looks healthier, you know. Uh, it got us from some place in China um, and it was kind of sketchy, but tried them out and it worked, you know, it worked a little bit. It was better than the toilet paper. Um, so we started with that. Uh, and, you know, after a while, you know, we had a lot of problems with it. They tore, they were, you know, sketchy like production. Uh, and, you know, they scratched on the way down. And that's when we, you know, we reached out. There's, something called oblates that have been around for about a hundred years, uh, in Japan and oblate. Yeah. Oblate. So that's, you can see where the, the blade yeah. comes from. Right. Yeah. And their medicine, their medicinal wafers, they're used just for medications they are sold in pharmacies like that. Um, but they're, they're amazing. Right. So as you've seen, they work perfectly. Um, and, but the, the difference is that, uh, so we wanted ours to be bigger, you know, like the size of a toilet, you know, it doesn't where it came from the time. So literally the size of a one ply of toilet paper, we're like, okay, well, yes, you're right. It is the size of a toilet paper <laughs> sheet. Wait a minute here. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is changing everything for me now. That right. I'm gonna, this is two of them stuck together, but right. yeah, it's the size yeah. of a toilet, which is, we all know. That's yeah. not enough. <laughs> it's enough for this, but not yeah, enough yeah, for yeah. the other thing. Right, right. Um, but yeah, that's actually where the size the size of that came from. We wanted to be about, you know, we want to be able to take the same amount. I'm a big guy, I like to take a lot of powders, like you know, the bulk supplements. Um, so then you know, we tried those and they were life-changing. We're like, these are this is it. This is it, right? So I mean, that's really that's really where the business started. Since we changed the new films, I mean, we've been we've been doing real well. We blew up. Um TikTok. And I know you follow me on Instagram. Our TikTok is actually where we, you know, we post a lot of the videos 
like a few days earlier on TikTok, like we just okay. posted the final, the Harry Hoxie, the cancer treatment video with the cures and all that, what he used in it um, on TikTok. And that's like our biggest following, but you were trying to do the same thing with others. Um, but I got into the, yeah, the alternative methods because it's, it's just something so interesting and people, you know, they swear by these things. There's people that go to these places and they get cured and they were, they were terminal and there's yes. thousands of cases like this. Yeah. Well, like I said, you're so on your Instagram, I, I mean, just for this interview, I just br briefly went through it because there was, I know there's things that pique my interest and uh, there's like all, all the, you tell stories on there, short little stories. And some of the crazy ones are these guys who um, uh, possibly cure, were curing cancer. And then, you know, the, the industry, as you indicated, um, you know, the, the industry came in and just swallowed them up, shut them down. And um, then there's this guy, Dr. Sebi. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Yeah. Sebi was uh, teaching people about CMOS. And I know CMOS just blew up on the scene. <laughs> I'm, I, I never heard of it before. I'm like, oh, now there's another yeah marvel <laughs> thing out there where has that been but right. um you said in the video that he may have been killed yeah so well it's, it's it's a funny story so his family actually like his daughter says that they got a confession from someone that participated in his death uh he, he died in a, a honduran jail for he was arrested for money laundering right but this guy i mean he, he you know his place was in honduras because he couldn't practice in the u.s so he got kicked out of the u.s he did this in honduras and beautiful place you know a lot of people went there were healed and whatnot all sorts of diseases like there's all sorts of diseases that he apparently healed um and so the guy would come back because he also lived in the u.s so he would come back and forth and he would always have like you know thousands of dollars on him because it was that's how he got made money in honduras um but this time they arrested him and he so when he got arrested it was it was later in his life but he he like literally uh a couple months before there's videos of him and i i don't know i think i've showed this he's just like he's he's doing a seminar and he literally drops down to his knees hard and he gets back up he's perfectly healthy man right yeah perfectly. and he's like an older guy yeah he was like 83 i think when, yeah. when this happened and so he was arrested coming into the u.s again and in in the jail i think he was only there for like a week or so he said that he talked to his daughter like literally the friday before this was saturday it happened and he says i'm not eating because they're trying to poison me this is what he says i mean um and so the next day apparently he dies of pneumonia and he was fine probably friday he was fine i mean he, he did, right. this is a guy that did fast for 90 days you know so i mean right that, that's just one story you know that's just one story um, but you also have people like Harry Hoxie, who I've been doing a video of recently, and this is like the craziest story, um, one of the biggest in the last century of like some medical suppression. Like they proved in court that is uh, that is external uh, like herbal treatments and pace cure cancer. They proved it in court, melanoma especially. Um, you know, the AMA editor, Dr. Fishbein, admitted it. It's just on record. Uh, and then the F after Fishbein, the, doc uh, the AMA editor, who had never treated a patient in his life, uh, was, you know, resigned, um, you know, big money must have just gotten another, you know, it, it, he was probably just a front man, you know, and then the FDA went after Hoxie for the internal treatments, which they couldn't prove didn't cure cancer. So they, they got him on technicalities, uh, closed all his clinics in one day, and the dude just stopped practicing. His nurse took it to Tijuana. They were the first to go to Tijuana. And now there's a bunch of different types of alternative methods, like medications in Tijuana, but that's just, that's just another one. I mean, I got, I literally have a list here that I actually wrote because I wanted to like, you know, share to people like we're interested of just like some of like the, the cures. This is just cancer. This is just a cancer list. I mean, there's, there's things for, there's treatments for everything, you know? Um, and there's yeah. doctors to be found though. Like you oh, said, yeah. if you want to go to Tijuana, right. And are people doing this? Are there like, um, who's, who's the people that are like, I guess you got to have money, right. You got to pay out of pocket. Well, it's actually not even that much. I mean, for example, like the Hoxie uh, therapy, that treatment, uh, that clinic's been around since I think they went there in 1963. Uh, Mildred Nelson, his chief nurse, took it to Tijuana and she died in 1999, but her sister took it up. And so it's still open today. Uh, and I think the last the last that I saw the cost was it was like eight hundred dollars, which I mean, if you're going to pay a deductible and then like whatever else for cancer treatments that you're going to end up paying thousands of dollars at a mm -hmm. hospital. I mean, it's not it's most likely unless your insurance is incredible which you already pay a lot for in some manner i mean it's going to cost you less if you think about it and that's i mean that's like really the basis for why these therapies don't stay i mean because you can't patent nature and i mean that's that's the, that's really where it all starts you know so i mean 
you look into it and it starts, it gets scary, you know, it's scary, but it's really interesting. I, I find it so interesting, but I understand, I understand like the chasing the money. I get that. But when it comes to like actual cures and, and hurting people to make that money, that's, that's ridiculous to me, you know? So I just, I just want to share the information that I find on it, you know? Yeah. And you do a good job of, of doing that. Um, I mean, I'd stuff like that. you just even have other cool videos where like how to make your own pre-workout. Oh yeah, which, which I think is great, and it, you know, um, it, it, you're making it with the purest supplements. Um, do you remember what the ingredients are for a pre-workout? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so it, th there's a there's a lot of you know uh, thoughts on this. Uh, my personal, uh, what I believe, and you know what works, right? You have a few like th like three or four main things that should always be in a pre-workout. I think, right? Um, What's up, everybody? Are you in the market for a new steel mace? Look no further than Addex Maces and Clubs. Go to addexclub.com, place your order, and have them delivered right to your house. Adjustable steel mace made right here in the United States. Okay. So, I mean, I have it. All right. So, here's the deal. You were about to give us uh, a list of making your own pre-workout and probably were being monitored by the supplement companies <laughs> and, and they shut down the zoom on us. That's, That's what, what happened happens. here. Yep. So we're going to get this information out either way. Yeah. I'm getting a flag that we got 10 minutes left. So what we're oh. going to do, we're going to, we're going to use the time up and then we'll discuss, we'll maybe do another interview right after this. We'll, we'll, we'll get it all yeah. together. Cool. So cool. sorry about that. If there's any interruption there uh, in the audience, but uh, this is a, a titillating uh, conversation we're having. <laughs> Harrison's going to tell us how to make your own homemade uh, pre-workout. So go right. ahead, my brother. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I really the the three main supplements that I think that should be in every pre-workout. You know, and some people will disagree with this, but um, first of all, well, no one disagrees with citrulline, right? You have L-citrulline uh, as nitric oxide booster. It turns it's like a precursor to arginine in the body, right? And arginine has been around forever, but apparently taking arginine by itself can reduce your body's own production of it. So citrulline is a precursor and it turns into it once you take it, but you have to take it about 45 minutes to an hour before you work out because it has to have time to turn into it, right? Um, so that's number one, okay? Uh, number two and number three are beta alanine and creatine. And people, the thing with these two is that you don't technically have to take them right before your workout. You can take them at any point during the day. Um, beta alanine and creatine both have to build up in your system to have the best effects, um, you know, over like a two weeks to a month's time. Um, but personally, it's easier for me to take them all at once, you know? So I just think if you're already taking it an hour before your workout because of the citrulline, what's the difference if you take the beta alanine and creatine before your workout and you take the same mix first thing in the morning on days that you don't work out, right? So those three, right? And the ratios, you know, I mean, it, it depends on the person. Oh, well, not the ratios, but like the amounts you take depend on the person, which is why I think making it yourself is so much better. There's another, there's a couple of the things that I add to mine. Um, betaine, which is also called trimethylglycine, um, that, you know, helps the creatine, especially, and it pulls uh, water into your muscles, you know, um, Caffeine. Um, with caffeine, I'm kind of, I don't really, I don't add any just normal caffeine, right? Chemical caffeine. I, I use matcha because it's natural. It also yeah. has L-theanine. It's a good, you know, it's a good mix. Yep. Um, tyrosine is good um, because it's a precursor to dopamine and norepinephrine in the body. Uh, you know, it helps. It's, almost, it's like a non-stimulant, you know, energy boost, right? Uh, after those, the only things that I, I will add usually are some, like, uh, like minerals or electrolytes. So I actually use pink salt because it's got, you know, plenty of minerals, you know, it's got a lot of salt. Um, sometimes, I, depending on, you know, what I have, I, I use magnesium. Um, I get a lot of potassium fruits and whatever I eat, so I don't do that. But those are the, those are the main seven things that I put in my workout, right? The citrulline, the beta alanine, the creatine, the betaine, uh, the matcha, and then I have uh, the pink salt and maybe some magnesium. Sometimes I, I'll even add black pepper. Uh, because black pepper has something called piperin in it, and this helps the absorption of other alkaloids, right? So it, it, it uh, causes your, your stomach to uh, push out a little more acid that absorbs it better. And that's also why they, if you didn't know, that's why they add black pepper to turmeric, you know, yes. because it helps the absorption. So that's something that, you know, I just, I literally just take a grinder. I'm just like, oh, you know, um, but that's that's really the, the, the my favorite pre-workout mix. And with the citrulline, um, 
some people say, and some people do crazy amounts of citrulline, which I think that's, I mean, you don't need that much, you know, anywhere from three to six grams for me personally is fine. Um, I usually do like four, you know, I get great pumps off that. Uh, and the beta alanine, I'll do like two to three grams. Creatine, I'll do five to eight grams. A lot of people actually underdose their creatine. I've noticed that I've gotten much better gains. Yes. Yes. It always says like take five grams. And I did that for years. And then I started taking like twice the amount or mm -hmm. one and a half times the amount. And I noticed then I started to notice, I was like, well, something's going on here. I haven't changed my diet, uh, a little bit more fullness in my muscles. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. I noticed the same thing. It's like a few months ago, I did the same thing. I was like, okay, let me, let me double this up. And it's been like, whew, <laughs> you know, Double, it's real doubled good, it. real good. yes. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. I, mean, they, I bet you because they're worried about creatine, like if you, people go for blood work and their creatine's too high, mm -hmm. the doctor's going to say, oh, there's something wrong with your kidneys. And oh, gonna, yeah. I, I don't know. I Usually, uh, I can't see why the supplement companies would be um, under – Dosing. Yeah. They would want you to use more as much as much as possible. Right? The only reason, product. yeah. Well, the only reason that I would see something companies underdosing their stuff, which many of them do, is I mean, it's money. I mean, citrulline is super expensive, right? The powder itself, yeah. uh, creatine too. Now, I mean, I just I just bought like an like a like a two point two pound bag, you know, kilogram uh, bag of creatine. It was like seventy bucks, you know. The the citrulline, same thing. It was like sixty or seventy bucks. You know? I mean, they're getting yeah. expensive. So you, this powder, I mean. You can take, I mean, but if you buy like a $45 thing of pre-workout, right? And it'll have, yeah, like you say, it'll have like three to five grams of creatine. It'll have like, say if it's a good pre-workout, it might have like five to six grams of citrulline, one to two grams of beta alanine. But like you, they tell you, you know, oh, work yourself up to two scoops. And yeah, but then you'll go through the bottle in 10 days, you know? So yeah, right. that's just, it's, and it's, it's ridiculous. Pre-workouts with the caffeine that they use, uh, no good for me, man. I bet you a lot of other people hate it too because it actually, it's so much caffeine. It actually makes me weak. It makes me not like, I don't feel like I'm getting a good pump at all. It's the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. And I, that's why I like the idea of using green matcha with the L-theanine in it because the L-theanine, doesn't that kind of like um, balance out caffeine, right? right? It takes yeah. away the jitters. Yeah, they say that. Um, and yeah, it's like a calming effect. And, you know, it's all natural. It's, you know, the, the mix is all natural. It's matcha. Um, and the, the amount of caffeine that's in matcha, it's like nothing near, like 200 milligrams has been like the, because like they've done studies in the past where it's just been like the standard, right? 100 to 200 milligrams. Usually it's 200. Some are even crazy, like 380. It's ridiculous to me, you know? I mean, um, so the matcha has, I think per like two or 1.5, like a, like a one and a half teaspoons, it's like 35 milligrams. You can take two of those, you're good. You know, that's like, that's like how much caffeine's in a Red Bull, but it's from a natural source, has the L-theanine, it makes you feel good, you feel good about it. Um, I've never had any problems with that. And you, you don't need more caffeine than that, at least personally, you know, I found it. Yeah. And I actually, sometimes I don't even, you know, add that, I'll just do the main ingredients. And when you start working out, the energy comes, man. The energy that's comes. that's fantastic. That's another great idea for doing it this way because sometimes I'll drink coffee and I don't need any more stimulants, but I could use the other stuff. So I just leave the caffeine out and I just put it in one of your blade peeps. So I'm still getting the caffeine up. This coming from another source, or like you said, maybe uh, or it's later in the day and you don't want to have caffeine, but you want some of the other ingredients that. That sells it right there for me. That's right. awesome. So I'm definitely going to be trying this one out. And since I have my bleep papes on hand, all I got to do is order some L citrulline, which tastes disgusting. <laughs> it tastes like like pure sour. I don't know. Yeah, dude, this stuff's rough. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. So I mean, when you buy a bulk, that's where I bought bulk citrulline once, and I was doing the tossing wash oh my god and and then i i stopped buying it because yeah. i didn't you know i didn't want to take it anymore yeah it's actually rougher um well citrulline powder and all like pre-workout powders you know they dissolve instantly in water right so there's yeah. with the blade papes there's we, we write it on the directions but not everyone else like not everyone sees it you know there's two different ways to use them you have like the kratom and you have herbs and stuff and you can you have all the time in the world you can literally you know you can put it in a cup of water and let it sit there for a minute and then you can just drink it whatever it's fine it'll float you know it's organic but with powders like that that dissolve instantly, um, the way that we do it, and we tell people to do it, you just put it in, you seal it up the top, you put it in your mouth first, and then you take a sip yeah. of water, almost yeah. like, a, like a toss, but you have the thing between it. That's how I do it. Yeah. yeah. But now I see you do it. You drink it out of the cup. Now we have a minute and 40 seconds left. I know you did this in less than 10 seconds on, <laughs> on Instagram. I'm happy to so do it. Let's show everybody what you got. 
Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the pouches because I think that they're the the quickest and easiest way, right? And so we have a few. Yeah, I gotta get pouches. I'm using the older ones. Let's see if I can uh, point this little down right here, right? Uh, you got a minute and twenty seconds, and we're getting no, cut off. No problem. Okay, so these are the the pouches right here. You take one of these, and we, it comes in a little stand. You have like little stands that you put it in, so you just press it right down in the stand. Um, it comes with a spoon too. So this is just like this is a uh, mushroom powder, right? So this is like a complex of like seven different mushrooms: lion's mane, reishi, um, you know, like. Uh, turkey tail, chaga, all that stuff. And you just put it, and I'll just show, like, you can kind of add a lot. That's probably, like, two grams right there. Less than one minute. No problem. So then you go like this, take it up right here. You just really fold the top over. That's all you got to do. You know, you you can either dip it. Oh, let me lift this up again one second, okay? So you can either dip it in the water, put it in your mouth, and then swallow it. Or you can do it like I like to do when it's an herb uh, because it's organic. You just dip it and then you kind of let it float there. So it literally, it'll float right there. This is only for herbs. Got right? 30 seconds. And then, boom. And that's it. I mean, down it, the hatch. Down the hatch. It turns to gel. It's like almost like, think like a, like a, like a pelican eating like an anchovy. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how else it just goes right down. So, all right. There you go, everybody. You see how easy it is. Uh, blate, blatepapes.com, right? Right. Yeah. All right. We're, Hey, everybody, if you're looking for new fitness equipment to add to what you have and you want to find something that really complements the steel mace that you're swinging already, consider going with freedomstrength.us. They have strongman sandbags, throwing sandbags, uh, all kinds of lifting gear. They have training sandbags, resistance bands, and weight vests, and they have apparel. And if you use the discount code SMN10 at checkout, you're going to get 10% off. You're going to help support the podcast and you're going to help support a good American company right in Pennsylvania, US of A. So check out freedomstrength.us. Yeah, I don't know uh, how this, if we're going to, if this is going to be edited <laughs> together, this whole podcast. <laughs> is sponsored by zoom zoom is <laughs> is responsible for this podcast how it went you know the editing and everything and also anybody in the audience who's listening if you want to make any donation toward the steel mace nation please do because the editing part of this stuff takes so much time away from my my beautiful little daughter and my wife and they they hate me because i'm not spending time with them so buy a shirt Go to steelmacenation.com and buy a workout video or something like that. Show some support, and we're going to make sure that this video is perfect for you. So, Harrison, uh, you just beat the clock uh, by seconds, <laughs> right? You got cut yeah. off, but you showed how quickly you could devour one of these blade papes. You were taking some reishi mushroom right. powder. And, uh, yeah, like on, on Instagram, you did it in less than 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So there's no excuse. Um that it takes too long. What does take a long time is using those capsule makers. Oh right? yeah. So capsule filling machines, yeah, they'll take actually I can't have one right here. I mean they take they, forever. Yeah, they do. Um, and then you know, you end up using them right away, especially if you don't some people have trouble swallowing like the big ones, like the triple zero. So they'll do like this yeah. double zero is the most popular. And yeah, it takes forever to do that. I mean, I, I showed in a video, it took me like 20 minutes to fill it. I'm sure you could, you know, if you really try it, it maybe 15 minutes. Um, but for the same amount of powder using these, I mean, and you don't even have to, you don't have to fill them all at once like that. You can just, whenever you're ready, just, you know, take it out, fill it. That's the best thing about using the bulk supplements. You know, you don't have to go and sit there and fill all these like things at once. Whenever you're ready to take it, you just pull it out, put it in, take it, you know? Yeah. Well, the, the reason why I found blade papes, um, actually I could tell you, I was looking up how to, you know, how to use the capsules. Right. Mm -hmm. And somebody wrote, I don't know if it was on some website, but somebody wrote, try blade papes and <laughs> i was like oh okay because this is what what was happening i was trying to fill capsules with with kratom mm, yeah and i was using the triple zeros i do believe yeah. but you you not only do you have to pour it in there you have to pack it yeah and if you don't pack it it's not the right dose mm -hmm. so now you're packing it by the time you get done with this whole thing 
you have powder all over the place. Yeah. So you're losing your product. So you're wasting more money. The capsules cost money, right? The capsules take up like a bag of capsules takes up like it's like a loaf of bread. It takes up space in your cabinet, right? Now yeah. get this one top shelf away from everybody. And I didn't realize the bag had a, uh, a you know, had like a zip zipper closure. Yeah, it wasn't closed. <laughs> it wasn't closed. And I reached up and I grabbed it like a caveman and all these transparent little bubbles fell all Everywhere. over the place, all over the floor. The cat is coming over playing with them and stuff. And I got these things all over the floor and I'm losing my mind. And I'm like, these things suck. Don't ever even, unless you're making supplements for your own company and you need to right. make them, buy blade papes. It's so much easier. Uh, appreciate so, that. Yeah. So what, as far as bulk supplements are concerned, I use the company bulk supplements. Yeah, that's a big one. I mean, it depends on, on what, what you're getting for, for things like citrulline, beta alanine, creatine, those things. I use bulk supplements too. Um, there's a couple other ones, but um, some of them I don't trust. You know, Amazon is funny because people, people condemn Amazon, but it's not Amazon, right? It's the brands that are on Amazon. So as long as you know what you're buying, right? Because there's, there's also there's great websites that have them too, like BulkSupplements.com. But you buy on Amazon, it's fine. You know, it comes quicker and stuff as long as you get the right brands. And I think Bulk Supplements is great, um, except when it comes to things like uh, like mushroom powder or herbs and that kind of thing. I'm not too sure about those. Um, I actually did a, one video where I compared uh, the mushroom powders, like for six different companies, I think it was all Turkey tail and bulk supplements is a little weird. I don't know if they extracted it weird or what, but it was nothing like the other ones. Uh, it fully dissolved in water, which none of the mushroom extracts usually do. Uh, I, th I just thought it was weird. I didn't, I couldn't get any more information from them on it. You know, I emailed them and there's been other companies too. I, I don't suggest using micro ingredients for anything except for like the actual, like citrulline, that kind of thing. Micro ingredients is okay, but their herbs, same thing. Um, there's, do not get their CMOS powder that's it's grown in tanks, you know? I mean, you got to think most of these powders, which is fine, they come from China, right? Yeah. That's usually fine. It's fine. Right. But um, because, they, you know, they have great uh, facilities in China, really. I mean, most of our chemicals come from China. Um, but when it's things like herbs or things that have to be grown that isn't native to China, like all mushroom powder actually should come from China because traditional Chinese medicine, they've been doing it a lot longer than we have. So that's fine with mushroom powders from China. But things like, you know, CMOS, they're growing in pools there, you know, and you don't want that. You want wild harvested. Um, so you, you just got to know, you got to, you got to look into it. I mean, it's, it's some of, it seems daunting, but really once you get into it, it's not that bad. And you start looking at ingredients, you start, you just do a little research, a little bit of Google. Google can be even a little rough though. You know, the first page is usually filled with um, money. Yeah, <laughs> you right. Know, you look for the real stuff. You yeah, know, you got to go to the bottom <laughs> second page for anything. Yeah, um, but you know, I mean, propaganda. You a little bit of you know sense, you can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we've been mentioning kratom. Um, now, do you ever take kratom, or you you said you ha you had a um, an addiction? So I don't know. Kratom does hit your opiate. Um, uh sites in your, in oh, yeah. your body yeah but i i was reading that a lot of people who have given up uh opiates use it to help them uh as an alternative mm -hmm. it's great for that right and yeah we, we're super believers in uh in kratom right it's it's a mu opioid receptor agonist partially um very similar to i don't know if you know what suboxone or subutex is it's buprenorphine. It's it's a chemical, and it, it um it's a very similar thing, but it lot, acts a lot longer in the body, so it takes a lot longer to get out of your system, and it's hard to get off of. Um, funny you asked me if I take kratom. So uh, I did uh, back in 2010, right? I mean, I was you know I did now and then, especially you know before my addiction, all that, or actually during my addiction. Um, but what happened was uh, about six years ago, we got on sub subutex, um, and we. It's funny you ask because literally one month ago, we finally like, we we're like, okay, well, we've been on this for so long. We're finally ready to get off. You know, I don't want to be on big farmers teats forever. I want to be done, you know, with all the content we're putting out. It's just like, I'm ready to be done. But I mean, it helps, you know, it helps for a long time. That's why conventional methods, you know, they work. But um, for this particularly, because Subutex, it stays in your system so long, it's really hard to get off of. So we became like our own, <laughs> like all the people that use uh, our films for Kratom and they get off of these, you know, drugs, we did it ourselves, you know. So um, about a month ago, we we titrated down on the Subutex to about one and a half milligrams and we jumped off and we started taking Kratom that day. Um, it took a while for the Subutex to get out of our system, but we did that for about two weeks. And we decided because... We were taking it because we were on the stubby ticks. It's really strong. And we were on it for six years. Um, we had to take the Kratom every three to four hours 
uh, and, and, and it got us baseline. You still have that, you know, anhedonia, which is, you know, you don't feel that much joy and all that. And you're kind of dragging. We have to wake up in the middle of the night to take it, you know, because we couldn't sleep. So um, slowly we, we went down. And then two weeks ago, we went down to about a half gram a day and then we jumped off. And uh, so it's, it's been actually, we're on the 18th day off of everything. Funny. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it, right? so it helped. Oh, it, it was, it was great. I mean, because you, you still feel, I mean, coming off of something as strong as Subutex, right? Uh, the doses that we were on, it's, it, it is rough, but the Kratom, I mean, after the first, cause Subutex takes a while to get out of your system. After like the first two or three days, we started to feel normal when you take it. Right. And I mean, that was, that was a blessing for us, right? Because we, we own a business, we have to work every day. You know, we send out orders, we do all this stuff. And the anxiety just from not getting certain things done is, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, and the Kratom worked excellent for that and yeah i mean we have we still have it so like if you know down the road you know you ever have pain it's a natural supplement you can take um it only the best thing about it for me is that it only lasts in your system for like a day because it has such a short half-life it's like two to three hours after you take it so i mean if you're a healthy person your liver works fine it's two to three hours later in like six nine hours you're not, not going to feel it at all and so that it, it actually lowers its addictive potential right because people take it once twice even three times a day but they still sleep at night because it's out of their system by the by the morning, right? Yeah. So the addictive potential is so much less for it. You can only take it by mouth, um, but you know it tastes like crap. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so I only take it maybe once or twice a week. Um, oh yeah. So I mean, that's know, great. yes, and and because because I know like anything could be addictive, right? You could just get even uh, habitually addicted. It's not even really a physical thing, but right. Um, I I might take like. Uh, three to four grams which I, like when i take that i feel it you know yeah. but it's like it's such an unusual feeling because uh you're very it's not like you're drunk it, mm -hmm. you're very coherent and you're actually very focused right uh but you're also in a good mood man you're just That's... in a good mood and it and nothing nothing is um but it's not like uh like you're out of reality either you know mm -hmm. you're totally aware what's like you're in a good mood just because you, you, you feel good. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I swear by it too. I think, I mean, it's, it's a blessing for a lot of people, you know, and um, it works. Um, and like it, it has, like I said, it doesn't have as nearly as much addictive potential. Um, you know, you can't, you can't do real bad things with it. Um, and I mean, who, who wants to take that much? I mean, I, some people I've seen like some crazy amounts of powder, but you know, those are all, like you said, it's, it's an addictive yeah, like there's people taking eight grams and and uh, yeah, you know, multiple I've, times. Yeah, fifty grams a day. Fifteen. <laughs> fifty. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, this is, wow. I don't even want to get into it, but I, I know that's, people that you know. It, how are you gonna how are you gonna process that much powder? But no. I mean, so, you know, that's 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 another thing. That's that's an addiction that has nothing to do with the kratom, right? So I mean, but the kratom itself is such a wonderful wonderful substance. I mean, and it's all natural. Um, and also, I don't know how much you know, but the FDA is, you know, lobbying to get it suppressed. Yes. Well, I did. I, I see. I was aware of it because uh, a girl I know has been taking it for pain and she had problems with taking pills and all that stuff. The doctors would be like, here, take this, take that. And she just felt miserable all the time. And then all of a sudden she finds this stuff called Kratom, which she was like, it's a game changer. It made her feel better, but she didn't have to worry about being addicted to opiates or anything like that. It changed her life. And then one day she tells me, oh, they're trying to get rid of it, of course. And, you know, she went right down the rabbit hole, big pharma, <laughs> trying to get rid of it. And that's probably what it is. Um, yeah. So I, I ended up doing a podcast a while ago about Kratom just, just because um, – I saw that there was a lot of uh, rigmarole going on in, in the legal system, but I kind of trailed off from it. Where does it stand right now? So right now, okay, so we have, we, it's, it's good because we have some um, some people that are fighting for it. The, the AKA, the American Kratom Association is pretty big. Uh, Matt Haddo leads that and they do, they lobby for it. So I mean, if, by the way, also, yeah, donate to them if you if you believe in this stuff because they, they do a lot of lobbying, a lot of work um, and that's really impressive. But it's literally, now it's going state by state, right? So like, there are certain places in the U.S. and counties, even like there's one county in Florida where it's weird where you can't even buy it. The next you can write, you know, um, so some states ban it. And I think just it just happened, I think, uh, in Ascension Parish. I'm not sure if that's can't, can't I forget where um, in, in Florida or Mississippi. Uh, I think it's, I'm not, I don't know. I don't remember where uh, Ascension Parish is. It's definitely not in Florida. Uh, I think, yeah, it's something like that. I think I know what you're talking about, but go ahead. Yeah. And they just literally uh, they just banned uh, the sale of it. 
uh, but you are allowed to have it, right? So yes. people can go like next store and buy it, but you can't sell it there. Um, but then all everywhere else in the state, you can. It's just it's just really weird. That's what they're trying to do. And so the FDA is trying to do like you know backdoors, right? Because they they tried in 2016 to get it banned for for importation, and now apparently uh, they passed some law where it can't be imported as a as like a an herbal supplement. It can be imported as not for uh, consumption, but in the U.S. you can sell it as for human consumption. So it's like th there's th there's like legal technicalities where they can stop it from being imported for certain people if they want to, and that's kind of what they do with all these substances. You know, like weed yeah. has always been weed still isn't federally legal, right? So like you can't like if they want they can go into any freaking place and just take all their weed, you know. And, and so that's they, they kind of have these technicalities to where they they can still control it. You know, um, and the FDA is really trying to kind of go state by state now, and they're going to use those little wins that they get because they have, you know, whoever, you know, big pharma, whatever the the powers that be that want, you know, kratom to be less available. I mean, they have patience, they have money, they have they have all the time in the world, and um, even if it's a slow go, I mean. We'll see, but I mean, it's so far it's been pretty good. I mean, we're getting they're getting you know the kratom safety protection or the kratom consumer protection act passed in a lot of states, which is like giving access to safe kratom. And apparently now in Colorado, they they might start getting rid of extract shots and only be powders, which would be better. Not actually better for us, but also just better in natural powders instead of all these extracts making it so much stronger and people are getting more addicted to it right. so i mean you, you, you gotta see i mean there, there's good and there's bad to it but right now i mean it looks pretty good i mean there's at least for the next few years we'll be okay <laughs> you want to hear my my conspiracy theory let's hear it about it so uh this is what's going on all right i know i figured it out <laughs> so it, it comes out of thailand right right freedom all right so over there uh the crops are controlled by the the oligarchs, the, the the people who have the power, the military, the politicians, right? They're controlled because they're selling a ton of it. I mean, they're oh, making – it's, I, it's a, what? Millions of dollars a year. Hundreds of millions, no, right? Yeah, a yeah. lot. Okay. Whenever there's that much money involved, who's involved? It's politicians around the world. <laughs> so the politicians here in the United States, they're on the take too. They're getting paid off. Yeah. And everything that's going on where they come up with these little stupid laws, like, oh, you could buy it here, but you can't buy it there, whatever. Right. That's just to make, give it the appearance, the illusion that they're trying. They're, we're trying to stop it. Oh, we can't figure it out. Oh, it just keeps coming. We're trying so hard. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, yeah, give me more money. We're right. going to keep this thing going for as long as we can. That's my theory. Yeah. How does I mean, that sound? That's, dude, it likely, likely could be, you know, I mean, wherever there's money, there's, there's people that are getting the money behind, you know, people are people, they're going to do what they're going to do to make more. It's yeah. just, I get it. I get, I get it. But I also, sometimes it, I, it goes against what I believe in, you know, but, well, I get yeah. Sides. but yeah. Yeah, and, and you know that's that's where we're all stuck. We we know the reality of a situation. We have to reconcile it somehow and and mm. live our lives. But you know, you find alternative things uh, all the time, right? Like okay. like blade peeps is an alternative to spending a ton of money on supplements off the shelf. You know, you can right. find a bulk company. Like so, this, there's ways around everything. Uh, I believe in like grassroots stuff. I believe in it's in local networking. Um, I believe in doing business with um, as many American companies as possible, like such as, as your company. And speaking of which, who is in your company? Like, do you have a lot of employees? I know you just started in 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. So actually, I mean, believe it or not, it's just it's just Han and I, you know, uh, my fiance now. I don't know if he's like, literally, I, I proposed to her on Sunday. Um, oh. <laughs> and she said yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> she, she said yes. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Um, I appreciate that. Um, but I guess your your business model must be a good one because she's uh, she said yes. She's not like oh this guy with this crazy <laughs> idea, right? Yeah, no. I think it, it took it took maybe a year, year and a half to really you know get rolling, but she's all in. You know, um, and it's great. We work. You know, we work. Uh, it's just her and I that you know stateside, right? We do import from the Japanese, right? I would know China or anything like that, but all the films, because there's production, those production facility, facilities have been, you know, around for 50, 60 years and they do amazing jobs. Um, they, they do all of our, uh, our inventory and we have them shipped here. Um, we are the only importer of, of blade papes and oblates in the U.S. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, but it's like like it's I when I was when I was younger I was a skateboarder right so I was really into video editing and stuff so I do all the video 
Um, Hannah is big into graphic design, so she does all the packaging design, all you know the all the design of literally every every design color, whatever you see, has been picked personally by her and has been checked, checked, rechecked, checked again, and that's where it comes from. Um, but it's just her and I. Uh, here on here in the U.S., we work, you know, morning to night, every day, you know, we send out orders. Uh, a lot of our business actually is done. And that's why I believe in Amazon. Uh, a lot of our business is done on Amazon. You can't you, you can't do business uh, with a product without Amazon. These yeah. Days. And that's where I initially purchased from you. Was right. On and, Amazon, because that's just where you wind up. You just uh, it's it's a it's a search engine, basically. So yeah. it's going to find whatever it is you want. <laughs> I saw bleep plates. Blake Papes written down below on it. That's all it said. I said, what the heck is that? Let me go, let me uh, go on Amazon and boom. And I ordered like two right. packs and yeah, yeah, quick and easy. Yeah. But, but people yeah. can order direct from you. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Is, is there a price difference? Yeah. So actually the, the price for the pouches. So by the way, if you go to the website, it says free shipping over $15. So make sure you put in the free ship code because <laughs> I don't want people paying more than they have to. Um, and so, yeah, anything over $15, it's free shipping. Just type in free ship at, at the checkout. But uh, it's the same. The, the pouches are the same prices on Amazon, but the squares are they're $2 less. Um, and the refill packs, uh, they're the same price, but you might have to pay, depending on where you're at, you might have to pay tax. You'll pay less tax on our website because technically Amazon doesn't realize this, right? Um, the tax code's wrong, but... Uh, our films are a grocery item, right? And I think 57 or 47 out of the states don't charge on groceries. So our, our ta taxes, I mean, so our taxes on our website, you won't have to pay any tax on our website, so it's a little better. Uh, really, you know, I mean, it's, it's also, but shipping will take three days, you know, from the day, we always ship out the same day you order. Like, you yeah. know, even if it's past the deadline, we'll usually get out the same day, um, but it'll take three days. Um, usually. So, I mean, Amazon, it's one or two. I mean, it's, it's up to the person, but it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. I well, mean, it's not that kind of item. It's like, oh my God, I need it right now. I mean, right. unless, unless you just ran out and I mean, some then people, just, some then people just use, toss but... and wash for a little bit, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of get by, you know, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, either way. So now I, I had another, uh, I got a note here to ask you. Uh, so it looked like you were also taking the pouch and dipping it in an oil, right? Oh, oh, a black so, seed oil. Oh, so actually, no, no, no. So you, you can okay. The, you can do this, right? It's actually, uh, it's a little bit more advanced, right? So I actually take my black seed oil this way, and but you got to, you got to be, you got to be good with this stuff. So it, I just use one pouch. Uh, if you really you want to try it the first time, I suggest using two, but then you're using extra. So um, you can take oils in them, right? But you have to do it quick. Uh, and I like to fill up a cup of water. I, I literally, I'll, I'll pour in black seed oil and then I'll close it and I dip it in and drop it. And so what happens is the film, because oil is hydrophobic, right? As it stays away from water within the, it'll do that within the pouch. So the pouch turns to gel and the oil is staying within the gel bubble. Oh. So as it's floating, I like to just, you know, just like I did with the, with the mushroom powder, I like to just kind of like swallow it down. You won't taste the black seed oil. Um, if you actually drink black seed oil, and I didn't even realize this because I've been using it with edible films, it is it is spicy, you know, even with honey and stuff. So there's, there's some oils that are gross. I think, um, what, what's black seed oil for? Is that something that everybody should be taking? Um, uh, I mean, it really depends. It's, it's funny because it actually has a history. I think, uh, the, the Muslim prophet Muhammad said that, uh, it's, it's, um, like a cure-all, right. It can cure anything, which, you know, uh, who's to confirm, but it has something called thymoquinone in it. And, uh, it's supposed to be very good for your health. It actually is supposed to be good for, even coming off of something like uh, opioids or kratom, because technically they say it might even have like partial mu opioid uh, effects. Um, but it, it's a very good antioxidant too. And, you know, I mean, it seemed very interesting. The, I think it was found in the Egyptian uh, tomb of uh, King Tut as well, the black, the black seeds. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, if, if they were using it, you know, I mean. Well, it didn't help him. <laughs> right yeah i think uh, muhammad muhammad said oh, it's a cure for everything except death and uh, yeah, yeah right cure death. <laughs> but they but they valued it and that's why it was in the tube it, it was so important in their life he was like listen when you guys wrap me up in toilet paper and stuff me <laughs> in the sarcophagus make sure there's some black seed oil there make sure you yeah. know there's this or that and it was it was important to take right. it into the afterlife so they must have felt something it. beneficial from it and it was yeah. probably uh expensive right 
um, like Saffron, right? It was it would right. only be available for people of great wealth and power, right? Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, and yeah. So I think I think uh, in the in the in the tomb, it was in the form of just black seeds themselves. But to get the same amount of uh, nutrients from the seeds, you'd have to take a lot more, and your body could digest it as well unless you did a powder. So I think the oil is that's probably a better way to do it. But yeah, see that. But I like how you uh, connect history to right. these things. Uh, a lot of a lot of times you look up supplements or somebody's selling supplements supplements on instagram it's just like oh did you know that it was good for your heart and this that and the other thing okay great and yeah all right i mean that's all i really need to know but it's cool hearing that oh this supplement's been around since since the the pharaohs oh it was, right you know yeah. king tut was was you know <laughs> eating the seeds or whatever yeah i like that because it just goes to show thousands and thousands of years that these herbs and things like that uh, have been used by people and they all believed in it and they, they know it works. And going back to what, you know, what you said earlier, uh, you were talking about how all of a sudden this, all this alternative medicine became, uh, bad, you know, you don't take it like, Oh, you're going to give your kid, um, herbs when they're sick. Oh, you're a bad parent. No, give them, give them this medicine from this pharmaceutical company and right. it's chemicals and isn't, uh, isn't, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals basically made out of uh, pet uh, petroleum products. Yeah, petrochemicals. I mean, it really depends also. But a lot of times, you know, they'll get the chemical formulas from somewhere in nature. I don't know if you know this, but an Amazon rainforest is a huge... I mean, they're they're looking at new plants all the time for the medicinal purposes. I mean, and that goes to show you right there, pharmaceutical companies are looking at the Amazon rainforest. Why aren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you well, know, they're... You can't, like you said, you can't patent something that's grown in the forest. Right. But if you if you replicate it chemically and just change one little thing, oh well, that's our invention. Exactly, exactly. If it, there's one example of that the, with a periwinkle plant. It had two alkaloids um, that they took out, and even to this day, those two alkaloids, you know, they, they extracted them and they chemically synthesized them um, artificially. Those are used to treat leukemia. And I mean, it's, it happens all the time. You know, you can patent kind of synthesized chemicals um, and, and they'll be, they'll act in the same way as, you know, medicinal plants. But I mean, there's thousands of years of, of, of proof that these, these medicinal plants work, you know, and, and it's only real recently that it all changed, uh, you know, because of money. And I get it. I get it, money. I mean, you search anything on YouTube or on, on Google about uh, some kind of, oh, something for restless legs or something, it'll all be pharmaceutical ads. You know, I mean, yeah. it's money, 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 you know, makes the universe go around, the world go around, and I get it. But um, there's all these other things that you can look into, you know, and I just want to know about it. And I, that's why I think, that's why I really like the history, because I think people should know that um, I'm also, I don't know, I'm big into conspiracy theories. I'm a, I, I like to, yeah, I like to believe um, certain things, but at the same time, I, I want to do the research and I want to see, you know, I want to see the receipts, you know, yeah. I want to know what was real and what wasn't, because um, with the with the internet today and TikTok and all that, you have the most amazing transfer of information that you've ever had, right? Yeah, right. Boom, you know, instant. Yeah. Before it was all media and this control it can be controlled and newspaper and like that takes time. This is like an instant, right? And it can't be as controlled, especially TikTok, personally, I think. Um well, you know, Harrison, you 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 know, this is a, a good point to make here. Uh, like, you know, the media and everybody else, pharma, whatever, they'll say you're passing on misinformation. Right. right? And so I want to just compliment you uh, because you're running a business, you're putting food on the table and you're courageous because a lot of what I noticed, especially in the past 30 months, people don't want to draw that kind of attention on themselves, especially if they're running a business. Uh, this is something I've been critical of uh, with uh, fitness professionals. Now yeah. I, I could sit on my hill and, and be almighty, you know, judger and everything. And I know it sounds hypocritical of me because my real career is firefighting. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, there's people that they need their fitness business. It's their job and it's all they right. have. So I, I understand that, but you don't see a lot of people wanting to rock the boat and get that kind of label, but I appreciate the fact that you challenge things and, and that's what we need. We need that kind of discourse in the society. And it's my belief if we, if fitness professionals don't step up, if people in supplement industry industry don't step up and, and, you know, dissent a little bit and just at least create um, some type of uh, rebuttal or a pushback, it's going to get worse for us. It'll get to the point 
where we won't even be able to put this on a podcast, anything we're talking about, because they'll say it's all misinformation. We're telling people to go take black seed oil instead of taking their, you know, chemotherapy or something like that. Right, right. right? Or if we say uh, this supplement is good for making you um, not want to eat as much and it'll c- curb your appetite. Oh, you know, it's fat shaming, right? It'll be censorship. <laughs> it'll just keep getting worse. And I don't want to see that happen. So we could all make a, a, we could draw a line in the sand wherever we are and fight our little battles. And I think, yeah, like I said, you, I think what you're doing is good that you're, you're sharing this information. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I totally agree. Like, that's the thing. I was going to say this earlier that you you have to draw a line somewhere. Right. And you have to believe and you got to stand for that. Um, and and I don't you know, I, I can't be sure of anything, but I can I can look and I can give the information that I find and what I th- find to be as mo- most valuable for the people that are interested in these things. Right. So that's what I try to do. I try to I try to find these things that people wouldn't naturally go looking for, but could help them so much. Something so little that like it's been around and this has happened, but because big money pushes out most information, uh, it just doesn't get to them. Right. So I just, I just want to find those things that I find interesting and move them on to those people so that they can maybe use them. Uh, this is so funny because uh, not to, I don't know who, if you know who Jim Quick is. It's like, have you ever heard of Jim Quick? Sounds familiar. So he, he's, he's um, an Asian man that when he was younger, he had hit, hit his head and he had like real trouble learning and he had a learning disability. And so he actually, today he, he teaches people how to learn. So um, he was talking to some woman, uh, a young girl that her mother got cancer and she wrote to him and he, she read his books and like, you know, like about learning. And so she actually ended up getting all these books on cancer and like doing a lot of research. And she healed her, her mom who was given like, I think six months to live her mom has no more cancer. And I think that's so interesting because that's like a, today that's like a, some, some young girl was able to heal her mother's cancer when she was terminal, given six months to live. What does that mean? I mean, she just did some research. I mean, what, what does that say about the medical profession in general? I just think that's such an interesting story um, that these things, I mean, there's all kinds of stories like that and just people don't hear about it because it's not pushed to them. And I don't know, I just, I, I just found that interesting. I think that people should know more like things like that. Yeah, I agree, man. And, and, and you know, and, and, and that's another thing. Uh, people who are shopping around doing business with companies, y- you want to find a, like what you're just saying right now. It shows that there's more depth to what you got going on. Like you see yeah. your product as, OK, we it's a product. You're selling something. You're it could be bad. You could be <laughs> selling baskets or right, anything, wigs. Really. But behind that is a human being. And you have actual uh thoughts and ideas and you want also you want something good and constructive to come out of what you have it's exactly right and that's something totally that's right. helpful that, that you can't put a price on that and mm. i think that's what in our society is sorely missing like doing business with people that have morals values convictions that kind of stuff it's not always about the almighty dollar it's also about the the goodness that you could spread from your position and everybody sits in a, it's humble. You're, but you're in a sitting in a mighty position, despite it's, it appears humble. Like you have the ability to reach a broad audience and you're very good at storytelling. Like I said, your, your podcast, you're very professional. You know, it's a, it's, it's great to, um, to see how fluid you are with that. And I think, you know, that's going to continue to just be the, be the best thing for you, you know, as your, as your company grows. Um, Now, since you're the only one who's doing this product, are you worried about competition? Do you have to be worried about that? Or do you have Uh, an iron grip? It's it's a pretty, it's a pretty iron grip. I mean, it's not to say that, you know, it can't be done, but it's, it's a pretty iron grip. You know, we have uh, deals with the only manufacturers um, and there's the only ones that will even do business. um, Wow. Yeah, so we, it's pretty strong and we do really good business with them and we're, you know, we're really, uh, really grateful. Um, Have you gone to Japan? uh, Not not yet, actually. That's definitely on the list. But Yeah, um, you got to go and like shake their hand, look them in the eye, be like, yo, man, you are, (laughs) you are providing something to uh, us and, you know, my family, you know, like that's, oh man, that's freaking great. Well, we had actually planned to do this last year, but because of the COVID lockdowns, you weren't allowed to enter Japan. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then they just changed it, except for business. But, you know, because of that, and we had, you know, we had trade shows and all this stuff. come. So, like, we're definitely planning to do that very soon. I totally agree with you there. Are you going to be doing any trade shows in New Jersey? 
Anytime uh, soon? No, not not. So actually, we are. Why, doing, you don't like New Jersey? <laughs> there's. I don't know if there are trade shows in New Jersey for. Uh, so we're actually because Kratom users are our biggest uh, customers. We are doing a counterculture smoke shop convention in Denver uh, next next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I'm telling you, if they don't know about it, it, Kratom users. Will love they oh my god it, it's it changes the game for creative. <laughs> it's just it's just when you, you use it for the first time. I think people see it and they're like, oh what it has creative in it. They think it's some kind of like you know a sublingual film or something. It's like no, you got to see it work. Um, yeah. But they try it and it's, it when people that try it are very impressed. So I think that is going to be fun. It's going to be fun to go to this convention and we're going to do another one in Daytona. But we don't have a lot uh, lined up yet for like the next uh, year. But this month, the next and next three months we do. But we're gonna as soon as hey man, if there's any in New Jersey, we'll go. We'll come through for sure yeah because i'll come by and visit yeah and have you awesome. out. Be, be a pain in the ass talk your ear off <laughs> so do you have any other um ideas for products lined up in the future it's funny. <laughs> so it's funny you say that right so we actually just we just got this we haven't listened yet we've had it for about a month it's and it's just a scale right um yeah. it's pretty cool um I, we really like this scale um it's great it goes up to 500 grams um it's not well, it's, is it se- is it sensitive for very very yeah well so that's that's the thing right so it's yeah. it's well it's supposed to be sensitive to point so ten milligrams right or point zero one grams um it go it might go up like you know point zero one point or down point zero one um and that that really upsets like that keeps me up awake at night right so I'm like I'm like, that's why I haven't listed this yet because I'm like. You know, maybe I just lower, lower the price. I don't know. I'm really a big believer in quality, so I'm, I'm not even sure I'm going to yet. But the next ones are scales. Um, and funny you talk about capsule filling machines, right? We've been thinking a lot. Um, and the type of capsules you buy, uh, really, you know, you have like gelatin, you have hypomel- hypomethyl cellulose, which I don't use. I don't believe in those capsules um, just because they're artificially created. Um, but, I mean, they're not that bad. But uh, And then you have polaline gum capsules, and those are pure vegan. So you, we were thinking about maybe carrying a little bit of gelatin and polaline capsules. And I know it seems like it goes against everything we believe in, right? Um, but the thing is, people aren't going to ever stop using capsules, right? right. And you use them for all types of things, right? And like you said, you know, as a business, um, you know, you grow and we we're big into herbs and you know, supplements in general. And those people that are going to use them, I mean, if we can at least provide the best quality, I mean, we might as well look into doing it. So we're considering maybe offering capsule filling machines and capsules and just be, I know it's crazy to even say that, but, um, we're, I mean, people aren't going to stop using them. So we're, we're, we're going to maybe look into that. Um, but after that, we, um, don't know where we're going from there, but you know, it's, it's kind of like a process, you know, you see where you go, you grow a little bit. We learned recently, I don't know if you saw that, that, that you're supposed to uh, report every capsule filling machine to the DEA. Isn't, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Every single one, you're supposed to call the local DEA agent and then you're also because supposed to report it you might be making illegal drugs. Yeah, yeah um, that's, you got it. I mean, it makes sense. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of college kids out there, young kids that are just trying to make money and doing that. I get it. Um, but they'll put you on a list. Um, I don't know how many of the people that sell them on Etsy and whatnot, they actually follow that. But uh, it's legally required. And I thought that's really interesting. Um, but that's why I made a video about telling people. I'm like, hey, you know, you might be on a watch list if you order it. <laughs> it's so yeah. preposterous. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's crazy, man. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I think at the end of the day, like I said earlier, you know, just try to try to do things smart. Stay away from anything that gets you in trouble. Stay local. Work work kind of like black market style you know what i mean like mm-hmm. like just stay off the grid as much as possible right, right? <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's what we're trying to you know just we're trying to give information to where you know people can make their own decisions but we also you know you know we're still a business you know it is what it is but we, we do all right i think i think um people are finding us and it's cool we were doing yeah, Hey, well, I actually had a question for you um, go ahead. you know it's funny because we, we were looking at your website some of your videos and whatnot and we really wanted to buy a steel mace. Okay. <laughs> you, I mean, we were like, hey, where, where can we buy a steel mace from you? There's, yeah, there's all kinds of different places. And I guess, you know, you want to try something out first. Where, where are you located? Well, we're in, we're in Orlando, Florida, but we were wondering why you didn't sell steel maces. We were like, we wanted to buy it from you. There's already companies selling them and they get them from China. And oh, okay, that's the only you. way I would be able to compete. And I'd have to bring in like 250 maces just to get get the price down. Okay. I got you. Uh, but in Florida, there's um, in, in um, Deerfield uh, is the guy who makes Adex Mesa Clubs. It's made in the United States. Okay. Right? sponsor of the podcast, Addicts. 
Okay. But those are a little different, and you're going to spend more money up front. But if you just want to – what you want to do is maybe try it first, like find a gym. And um, if you look up – how far away are you from Miami? Uh, it's, it's like it's going to be like four hours. But my, my, my family lives in South Florida, so I'm there all the time. If, if you go to Lion Strong Gym, Lion okay. Strong Gym in, in, in Miami – um, there's a, there's, um, a guy there who, uh, he could show you everything about Mace and you could, you could get a feel for it. But if you just want to buy something real quick, go on, go on, uh, on Amazon and buy like an Apollo 10 pound mitt here, right here. Oh, nice. Okay. Is that showing up? Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Apollo 10 pound. So that's Apollo. Uh, on it makes them too. They all come from the same factory though. You're going to pay, right, right, pay right, more. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's a 10 pounds. I was really interested in it for shoulders, especially. That's that's why yes. I mean, like the, the workouts you're doing like that was that was really interesting to me because yeah, it, dude, you will love it. You will love it. I'm I'm get one, get one, okay. and let me know, and and we'll do a Zoom call, and I I can just show you some stuff. No, no problem. That'd be dope. That'd be yeah, dope. man. Yeah, and any other questions you have, just let me know. But uh, check out addictsclub.com. Right. Addictsclub.com. There, those are the adjustable, and then like I said. Um, uh, we're gonna get Zoom is gonna cancel. Oh, yeah, I got less than a minute. Yeah, so yeah, check that out and let me know. Um, everybody, thank you for uh bearing with us on this podcast. Uh, we'll see how this edits together. But uh, Harrison, good. you're welcome back. Uh, anytime you're a wealth of information, go to Blate, uh, blatepapes.com <laughs> at blatepapes on Instagram. Thank you, brother. We'll hey, see thank you, at the you so much, man. It was great talking to you. All right, bye, everybody. Take it easy.